In a previous video, we solved this problem. That is, we had this cannon, which launched these cannonballs towards this target. Uh, when the cannonball left the cannon, it had a speed V0. The target was a distance D away, and the, and the cannonball leaves the, the cannon at the same height that the target is. That's kind of important, makes the problem a little easier. So given these quantities, I wanted to find the angle theta at which to launch the cannonball in order to hit the target. And in that previous video, we did a fair amount of analysis in order to get our final answer. And I find that final answer was is an arc sine of some quantity here. We checked the units. The units look good, which gave us some, some confidence that we had a good answer. So what we're going to do in this video is examine this answer a little more closely and see if we can make sense of it, right? A really good skill to have as a dynamics student, as an engineer, is to take mathematical expressions like this and see the meaning in it. So that's what we're going to try to do right now. All right, so in my attempt to make sense of what's going on here, what I'm going to do is instead of looking at this answer that I have box. I'm going to look at the previous line when the answer takes a slightly different form. That is sine 2 theta equals dg over v naught squared. So I've rewritten this expression down here and I do it just so that I can scroll up and have lots of room to work with this thing. Now before I draw a plot of sine 2 theta, why don't I try sine theta first. So let's put theta on this horizontal axis. So sine of theta is going to look, look like a function kind of like this, right? So that's supposed to be sine of theta. And let's think about what's on this axis right here. So sine of 0 is 0. And then when we get to 90 degrees, that's where sine of of theta is its maximum. When we get back down to 180 degrees, that's where it's zero again. And then the maximum down here would be at 270 degrees and, and so forth. Get the idea, right? Now on this next plot here, I'm going to try to draw sine of two theta, not just, not just sine of theta. And I've sort of spaced out my angles in the same way that I have on the plot above. So what's sine of two theta going to be? Well, two times 90 degrees is 180 degrees, right? So sine of two theta at 90 degrees degrees should be the same as sine of theta at a 180 degrees. So therefore, this plot, whatever it is, it's going to go to zero right here. So what's happening is it's taking this zero right there and it's squishing it down over to here. And it's it's packing, I guess, twice as much uh, sine wave into the same interval here. So I'm thinking this big hump in the sine of theta gets mapped to a hump that fits between zero and 90 degrees for sine two theta. Is that making sense? So, so sine of two theta is going to look like this. Big hump right there gets mapped to this hump right there, right? And then 180 degrees over here, 2 times 180 degrees is 360 degrees. Sine of 360 degrees is the same as sine of 0. So we should get back to 0 again, right? The whole period gets fit between 0 and 180 degrees. And then up to 270 degrees, it would go up one more time. So here's my sine of 2 theta. And before you go on, you should make sure that this makes sense. Now just so I can manipulate this thing, I've drawn this sine 2 theta a little bit bigger over here. But you see, I hope you see that this curve I've drawn right here is the same as this one right here. I've just expanded the domain from 0 to 90 degrees, only, only focusing on that part, right? I'm doing 0 to 90 degrees for a very specific reason, right? Remember this is... This theta is supposed to represent the angle of a cannon, and this cannon only makes sense if it's somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. If it's more than 90 degrees, then it's shooting backwards. So I'll only consider that function sine 2 theta uh, between the 0 and 90 degrees. In that case, I get one hump that fits in that entire interval. And now that we agree that this is the function we want to look at, let me just get rid of these two right here so I can regain some space. So what we have here graphically is a plot of sine 2 theta. It's the left-hand side of my equation, but it's a function of theta. And when this function of theta is equal to dg over v naught squared, those values of theta for which these things are equal are thetas, are angles at which I can aim my cannon so that the cannonball hits the target. So what I'm going to do now is run a few sort of mental experiments, all right? So let's take a few cases. So in this first mental experiment, let's suppose V0, this is the speed of the cannonball coming out of the barrel of the cannon. Let's suppose that quantity is small, all right? Now look on the right-hand side here. If V0 is small, let's say it's particularly small, quite small, very small. If V0 is small, notice that V0 is squared, and then that squared number is in the denominator. So if I got something really small in the denominator, then this thing on the right-hand side is going to be something particularly big. I don't have a whole lot of room on my axes here, but let's suppose 
suppose this quantity is pretty big. So let's suppose it's way up here. In fact, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just draw a straight line. All right, so here's what I have for dg divided by v0 squared. v0 is small, which means this, this value right here is quite large. And guess what? If it's not going to intersect sine of 2 theta, because remember, sine of 2 theta reaches its peak at a value of 1. So if this quantity here is bigger than 1, ooh, they're not going to sect. I'm never going to have an equality. There's, there's not going to be any value of theta for which these two quantities are equal to each other. There's not going to be any angle whatsoever which I can aim my cannon at that'll hit the target. Does that make sense? Well, let's go back up here and think about it. Remember, here's the picture of my cannonball. So if V0, if the speed of the cannonball coming out of the cannon is particularly small and I shoot my cannon, then this thing's gonna come out and it's gonna maybe hit the ground right here. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what angle I shoot this cannon out. I can shoot it at a higher angle. It's probably gonna hit even closer. Shoot it at a lower angle. Maybe it goes a little bit further, but I do not have enough speed to make it to the target. Therefore, there is no angle whatsoever that'll get me to the target. And that's exactly what's happening over here in our mathematics. There's no theta which will get me to that target right at way up here. So again, no solution. In particular, we have no solution if this quantity dg over v0 squared, if that, if this quantity is bigger than one, we're out of luck, right? If it's bigger than one, then it can never equal the sine two theta. There are no solutions. So next I wanna consider the case where v0 is quite a bit bigger, so this quantity dg over v0 squared is less than one. In this case, the right-hand side of my equation would be somewhere down here, right? And now, notice the left-hand side of the equation, the blue curve, the sine 2 theta, is equal to the right-hand side of the equation, the dg over v naught squared, and I have the equality at two specific values of theta, right there and right there. Ha, huh, interesting. So let me just write that down. Two solutions. In fact, I'll label these two solutions theta low and uh, let's call one that one theta high. Now let me ask you a question. Does it make sense that there are two solutions? I would argue less, and let me try to draw a little picture. There, so there's my target, let's suppose. And what do these two solutions mean? This means that one solution for theta low, this is a fairly shallow angle at which I can shoot my cannonball and hit the target. But there's also a theta high, a higher angle, which will also hit the target. So I can shoot low and hit the target, or I can shoot really high and hit the target. If I'm somewhere in between, presumably that would correspond to a case where, let's see, some, some angle in between, my guess is this is one with, that would overshoot. And if I'm too low on this side, this would be an undershoot. If I'm too high on this side, this would be uh, another undershoot, like so. So for different angles of shooting this cannonball, different types of behaviors. I get an undershoot, they get an overshoot, I get an undershoot again. But there are two angles which are just right. This trajectory of my cannonball comes and hits the target. Beautiful. And so with that said, with this interpretation here, I'm hoping that this answer we got, this one right here, here, which is the same thing as this one down here. I'm hoping that this answer makes sense. I'm hoping that you're recognizing this answer is really two answers. And I'll leave it to you to think about some more special cases, do some more thought experiments. What happens if the, if the speed is even bigger than this? Right? That would mean dg over v naught squared would actually be smaller. So that means theta low and would be even smaller and theta high would be even bigger. Does that make sense? Or if I choose a value up here someplace. Let's suppose I chose a V-nut so this thing just barely kisses uh, this little sine curve we got there. What's going on there? Again, I'll let you think about that one. All right?